In this video, we're going to take a look at how to solve circuits with multiple resistors for individual voltages, currents, and resistances, both in series and in parallel. And we'll do so by just taking a look at one of the assignments you have for this unit. So this will act as an answer key for us here. The first thing that we're asked to solve on this question number one is for an individual voltage. If you take a look at the circuit up close here, we are told that there is a certain voltage supplied to the circuit from this battery source or whatever it is of 12 volts. That current then goes through a 4 ohm, 3 ohm, and then 2 ohm resistor before returning to whatever that, that energy supply is. And these are all wired in series. The current has to go through one, then another, then another. There's no alternate pathways there. So the first question we're asked to figure out here is what is the voltage supplied to the circuit? That's simply a matter of writing down what's given to us. Uh, it's 12 volts. In order to find the current for the circuit, we really need to find the resistance first. So uh, the second and third questions here should probably be inverted. You can't solve Ohm's law, V equals I times R, unless you first know the total resistance. And because these circuits, uh, these resistors on the circuit are wired in series, it's simply a matter of adding them all together. So we have our 2 ohm, 3 ohm, and 4 ohm resistor uh, together they make 9 ohms of total resistance. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in here for our total resistance and now we can solve for current using Ohm's law up here. 12 volts equals current times 9 ohms of resistance. Gives us a total current in the circuit of 1.33 amps. Those 1.33 amps are the same throughout the entire circuit. Again, we'll take a look at this more closely. If you are supplying 1.33 amps of current out of your battery, that 1.33 is consistent throughout. It does not increase or decrease when it encounters resistors or bare wire. Uh, it's, it's like a train that travels at the same speed throughout. So that allows us to make some calculations about individual voltages. The voltage that's experienced over here on what we'll call resistor 1, the 2 ohm resistor, still obeys Ohm's law. It's still subject to the V equals I times R equation, except in this case we're not concerned with the total resistance of 9 ohms. We're only interested in the individual resistance of 2 ohms. So the voltage on this resistor is equal to the current running through the resistor, 1.33 amps times the resistance of just that individual resistor which is 2 ohms. So the voltage expressed across resistor 1 is 1.33 times 2 or 2.7 ish. We can solve the other voltage using similar equations. We'll take 1.33 amps times 3 ohms and then times 4 ohms to solve for voltage 2 and for voltage 3. Uh, voltage 2 comes out at 4 volts and voltage 3 at 5.3 volts. In problem number 2, we have a similar setup with a known voltage, 25 volts, and individual resistors. This time there are four of them, and again, they're wired in series. The first thing we're asked to do is figure out the total resistance uh, acting on this circuit. And so again, it's really as simple as just adding all of them together. 65 plus 84 plus 73 plus 10 gives us a total resistance here of 232 ohms. So we should take that, put it in as our first answer here, 200 and 32 ohms. The current then can be solved again using Ohm's law. The total voltage at 25 volts uh, is equal to the current times the total resistance. So we'll write that as 25 volts equals our unknown current times our known resistance. And we divide 25 by 232, we get a pretty small current, which shouldn't be surprising because this is a lot of resistance. It works out to approximately 0.11 amps. The third thing we're asked to solve for is the power. There are lots of different ways to solve power. Um, current times voltage 
is probably the most basic approach and we know current and we know voltage so we could simply say power is the current 0.11 amps times the voltage 25 volts which gives us a solution of 2.7 watts you could use any of the other equations for power like I squared times R or V squared over R if you like you're, you're gonna get the same answer plus or minus a small degree of error for some of the rounding that we had to do to get there last thing you're asked to do is solve for the voltage across each of the resistor and we're asked to label those directly on the diagram so again I'll just remind you when the current comes out of this battery source or whatever it is it's 0.11 amps and that does not change at any point throughout the circuit so each of these individual resistors are experiencing 0.11 amps with slightly different or in some cases drastically different resistances so we're going to go back to V equals I times R we are solving for voltage and we know our current in each case is going to be 0.11 amps and that will be multiplied by whatever the resistances are for each of these numbers so 10 or 73 84 or 65 and when we do that these are the numbers we get for the resistor at the bottom 1.1 volts the resistor over here on the right 8.03 volts on the top 9.24 volts and on the top left here 7.15 volts if you add those four numbers up you'll find that they do come out very close to 25 volts which is what we'd expect in a series circuit it's a good way to double check your answer number three works out very similarly to numbers one and two so I'll just provide you with the answers here the total current is 0.21 amps the resistance 31 38.1 ohms for resistor one 4.76 for resistor 2 and 14.3 ohms for resistor number 3. Question 4 starts with parallel circuits. For the parallel circuit we have multiple resistors and multiple pathways that current can, can follow. So for example in this circuit here uh, current leaving the battery has an option to go through this pathway the middle pathway or the pathway that's labeled here on the bottom. In any of those three examples the current is going to be experiencing a full dose of voltage getting from negative to positive on the battery it has to experience whatever in this case four and a half volts so four and a half volts this way four and a half volts that way four and a half volts that way each branch though has its own resistance so there's going to be some difference in terms of how that current is split but that's a fundamental difference between parallel and series circuits is the manner in which you you can figure out voltage and current so first in number four, um, I'm going to go ahead and label our source of voltage as 4.5 volts so that we remember that here, 4.5 volts. And we are asked to figure out what is the total resistance if you have three resistors in parallel, 2, 3, and 4 ohms. The equation for figuring out resistance, total resistance in parallel, is 1 over the total equals 1 over each of the individual resistors, in this case 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4. To solve that we would first add these three numbers together and then to get this resistance out of the fraction the easiest way to do that is to take the inverse of both sides. If we do that we get a total resistance on this circuit of 0 0.92 ohms. That will allow us to calculate current. Uh, similarly as before, it's V equals I times R, where R is the total resistance when there's more than one resistor. So we knew that there was 4.5 volts present here. We're looking for the current based on 0.92 ohms of resistance. That gives us a value for the current of 4.89 amps. In order to solve for the current through each of these particular branches 
we have to first realize that the amount of voltage on each branch is going to be identical regardless of the resistor there because each of these branches starts at one end of the battery and ends at the other uh, you're getting your full four and a half volts as discussed before so I'm going to start by zooming in a bit on the circuit and we're going to label each of these resistors with the four and a half volts uh, of potential difference that they're experiencing so 4.5 volts here here and down here as well so now that means if we're looking at ohm's law for each of these resistors they're still beholden to that law so voltage is current times resistance if you have four and a half volts of electrical potential energy if you have two ohms of resistance you can solve these using v equals i times r in this case individual resistances instead of total all of these are going to have four and a half volts all of them will be solving for current. The difference is that one resistor here will be calculated based off of two ohms, one off of three, and a third off of four ohms. And when we do that, we divide voltage by resistance. We get the following currents running through these resistors. Over here on the top, 2.25 amps. In the middle, 1.5 amps. And on the bottom, 1.1 three amps. Round it off a bit there. These currents came from our battery initially as one whole 4.89 amps calculated before. And you'll see if you add up these three individual currents, they do add up to 4.89 amps because they come from that original stash, if you will, of current. That current, when it approaches the split, sends 2.25 amps toward that resistor, the rest continues down this way, and then there's another split, one and a half amps of what's left goes there, the other 1.13 continues along the bottom. And then once they meet up again, those currents are additive, so that when you return to the battery, you've got that 4.89 amps of current you started with, uh, just split differently among those resistors. Lastly here we're asked to calculate the power dissipated by the circuit. This calculation is identical whether you're talking parallel or series, so there's nothing new here. Uh, it depends on, on which variables we want to use, uh, how we want to calculate this, but we could certainly just do uh, power equals current times voltage. That's the total current running through the circuit of 4.89 amps times the voltage across the whole circuit, which is 45 volts. Uh, that works out to 22 watts. And again, there are some other methods you could use there. It should all get you pretty close to that same number. For the last problem here, let's start by taking a look at what we know. We know the voltage on the circuit overall is 18 volts. We know the current through branch 1 here is 1.2 amps. And we know resistor 2 down here is equal to 6 ohms. First, we're asked to figure out resistance number one so we're looking for this guy right here if we know we've got a parallel circuit here one thing that we can say for sure is that each branch is going to experience a complete voltage drop from 18 down to zero so 18 volts across resistor one 18 volts across resistor two and in fact any pathway that would take us from one end of the battery to the other would experience the complete 18 volts here so I'm going to go ahead and just throw those numbers in here 18 volts 18 volts in both cases. So that allows us to then use Ohm's law relatively simply uh, to calculate R1 in a manner not too unlike what we've been doing all along. V equals I times R, where the voltage is 18, the current is 1.2 amps, and the resistance is what's unknown to us. So 18 divided by 1.2 should give us our value here for R1. That works out to 15 ohms. I'm just going to pull this over and put that in for R1, 15 ohms. Going back to our circuit, I2, the current running through resistor number 2, can be solved in a similar fashion. We've got the same uh, basic approach using Ohm's law to solve V equals I times R. Only in this case, while the voltage remains 18, the current becomes unknown, and the resistance is the 6 ohms given to us for resistor number 2. So the current traveling through R2 is 18 over 6, or just 3 amps, 
running through there. So again, I'm going to go and put that back up here on top so we have that answer. 3 amps, current number 2. The rest of the calculations are all about the total resistance, current, and power in the circuit. So I'm no longer looking at individual items. I'm looking at the overall picture. So let's start by pulling this over again. Finding total resistance in a parallel circuit is using this equation, 1 over RT equals 1 over R plus 1 over R plus however many you got. We just have 2 in this circuit. So 1 over RT is 1 over the 15 ohms that we calculated for R1 plus 1 over the 6 ohms given to us for R2. So you're going to start by just adding those together in your calculator probably returning a decimal response which then needs to be inverted so we can flip this 1 over RT around and get the total resistance for the circuit is right around 4.3 ohms. So I'll put that in here as well, 4.3 ohms total resistance. The total current is calculated using Ohm's law from the total resistance. So uh, we'll go again to V equals I times R. 18 volts is the total energy on the circuit. The current is what we're trying to solve. The resistance we just calculated at 4.3 ohms. So we get a total current running through this particular circuit is 4.2 amps. Now we should be able to check that answer by taking a look at some of our individual calculations. 4.2 amps is the amount of current leaving this battery and it's coming down this branch here and then it splits into two pieces. These two pieces, the 1.2 amps and the 3 amps, should combine to make 4.2 and of course they do. 3 plus 1.2 is 4.2. Now, So that satisfies uh, our check of that answer. 4.2 amps from calculation uh, of the total circuit parameters and also from our, our individual marks as well. That just leaves a calculation of power. Uh, we have lots of options for how we might do power since we know both the total current and the total resistance. It probably makes the most sense to stick with the simplest power equation here which is P equals I times V where the current 4.2 amps the voltage is 18, so our power is 4.2 times 18, or 75.3 watts.